Hey everyone, how you doing? Dwayne here with Sims Ministries. It is Thursday, the 11th of April, and we're going to get back into our series that we've been doing on Thursday evenings, and that is You've Already Got It. This is a series done by Andrew Womack Ministries, <clears throat> and if you'd like to follow along or if you can get the PDFs for each one of these studies, Go to awmi.net slash sg420, and you can download the PDFs for each lesson, the outlines, the discipleship questions, the scriptures, <clears throat> and you can share this with as many people as you want, just as long as there's no, you're not charging anyone for this. That's one of the things I love about Andrew Womack Ministries is their availability to their materials. Um, I don't know of any other uh, ministry out there that is quite as uh, free with their materials and stuff as Andrew Womack is. There may be out there. I don't know. Just don't know of it. So <clears throat> I have to bear with me. This whole Southern Illinois stuff is uh, kind of catching up with me. Uh, springtime i never really had allergies um bad but they say the older you get you're more susceptible with that kind of stuff well i rebuke all that i rebuke these allergies and anything else that's trying to go on in the name of jesus well we're going to get right into our study today which is we're in lesson number 20 which is the law of faith now let's go to the lord in prayer father we thank you so much uh, that you've given each one of us a measure of faith. Not some bigger, not some smaller, uh, <clears throat> but all of us a measure of faith. We can take that faith and move mountains, is what your word says. And we just thank you for everything that you bless us with. We thank you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity to get together here and to go through this study. And I pray someone is touched by this somewhere out in the world, <clears throat> in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, the law of faith, lesson number 20. Uh, Peter had this measure of God's supernatural faith. He healed a lame man at the entrance of the temple. You can find that in Acts 3, 6 through 8. People were healed uh, <clears throat> as his shadow touched them, Acts 5.15. He even raised Dorcas from the dead, Acts 9, 39, and 40. These are the kinds of things Peter's faith produced. Notice to, to him, notice to whom he addressed his second letter. 2 Peter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter didn't even earn this faith through good works, but received it when he was born again through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> along, with the, along with Peter, you obtained this like precious, precious faith when you were born again. This is the measure of faith that you find in Romans 12, 3. If you don't believe this, you might as well rip Second Peter out of your Bible and throw it away. Why? Because he wrote it to those like preci precious faith. You don't have a faith problem. You already have the faith of the Son of God. However, in order to see the supernatural results Peter did, you need to learn how to exercise it. Well, that's the thing that I want in my life is how to exercise that faith. Discovering how to use it. <clears throat> this is Andrew Womack talking here. So he was baptized in the Holy Spirit 
during a miraculous encounter with the Lord on March 23rd, 1968. Immediately, he experienced a quickening inside and just began to understand things. Passion and new motivation rose up from within, and he started seeing people heal cancer, sickness, deafness. Although he still saw only a small percentage of the large amount of folks that he prayed for healed, that was a lot better than before. His faith had begun to work, <clears throat> and he started to realize that it was a powerful force, but he didn't yet know that he had the measure, the measure of faith, the faith of the Son of God. So <clears throat> he sought the Lord and asked him for more faith and more faith and more faith. In the process, he became frustrated. How many of you been that way? You've asked for faith. You've asked for these different things. <laughs> You're trying everything in the world to do what the Word of God says, and it just doesn't seem to be working for you. And he became frustrated. Then God revealed to him this truth um, that he's sharing with us right now. It made a huge difference in his life. Instead of begging the Lord to give him more faith, he started praising and thanking him for what he had already given. Did you get that? Instead of begging God for more faith, just start praising him and thanking him for what he's already given you. <clears throat> he began diving into God's word, not to get faith, but to better understand what he already had and how it operated. See, that's so many times we want to go past the studying of the word of God and digging in there and finding out, well, how, how does this work? Through studying faith in the Word, he started understanding the laws that govern faith and how to cooperate with them. Faith for salvation comes by hearing the Word of God, Romans ten seventeen. Then after you're born again, you have God's supernatural faith in you, Romans 12, 3, Galatians 2, 16. <clears throat> Galatians 2, 16 and 20. Therefore, when you study the Bible and hear God's word preached as a Christian, faith is already as a Christian. Excuse me. Let me back up. When you study the Bible and hear God's word preached as a Christian, faith is already present. You are just discovering what you've been given and how to use it. That's why <clears throat> you are encouraged when you read 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. You can honestly say, I have the same precious faith that Peter had. He had the measure of faith. faith. I have the measure of faith. Paul had the measure of faith, the son, faith of the Son of God. And I do too. Anything Peter did, I can do. I know it takes a lot of people get a little bit to get a hold of this, but this is what the Word of God is saying. Anything that Peter did, I can do. Anything that Paul did, I can do. Anything that Jesus did, I can do. Glory to God. Now, I know... <clears throat> Your mind starts telling you, that's the battlefield, by the way, starts telling you, no, you can't. No, you can't. You can't do the things that Jesus did. And you, it, the enemy will come against you and tell you you're, you're not worthy. You've done this. You've got a past. You've got all these things that, that will come against you. But anything Jesus did, we can do through Jesus if you are a born again believer. Man, that just swings the door wide open for so many things. What did Jesus do? He healed the sick, he raised the dead. Anything that Jesus did, we can do as well. <clears throat> 
Now, I know there's some of you listening to this right now saying, well, I, I don't see that. Well, that's what the Word of God says. That's what Jesus said. These things that I do, you will do, and even greater. Now, I got a revelation on this last night. I was listening to a, a, a teaching about the greater part. A lot of times we think that's bigger miracles or whatever. That greater means more, more miracles than Jesus did because uh, Jesus was one man and he went about doing things, but we as individuals can do more, uh, <clears throat> more miracles, more healings, more because there's so many more of us. Amen. Second Peter chapter one, verses two through four, grace and peace be multiplied on unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things, and faith is certainly one of these, that pertain unto life and goodness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding and great precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature before salvation hearing god's word <clears throat> excuse me before salvation hearing god's word brings faith to you if you'll accept it you can be born again using the faith that came to you through the word. Then once you're born again, you already have the faith on the inside. It's a fruit of the spirit. But reading and understanding the word gives you knowledge of what you already have. The word teaches you how faith works so you can operate <clears throat> and cooperate and receive the manifestation of your salvation benefits more completely. A lot of people, well, I'm, I'm had enough faith to get saved, and I know I'm going to heaven. That's that's it. Well, there's more to it. I mean, there's more benefits to being saved. You do have the supernatural faith of Son of God, but since it's His faith, it has to follow His rules. Oh, that's what we don't like, right there. We don't want to follow rules. You can't use God's faith just to do your own thing. It's not yours. It's his. And a lot of times that's what we want to do is our own thing. Being guilty of that, my own self. I want to do my thing. In a sense, you are borrowing it. The only way this supernatural faith will produce results is if you use it in the manner God wants you to. Technically speaking, it's not your faith. Some people say they're of the Baptist faith, and others uh, say they're Episcopal, Methodist, Presbyterian faith, as if there are different Christian faiths. However, Ephesians 4 verse 5 reveals that there's just one Lord and one faith, <clears throat> God's faith. You can't choose to believe any old way because if you believe wrong, it won't work. Guys, I'm telling you, that is so true. If you're believing wrong, it won't work. Why? You know, I've often said, now just take a little side note here. I've often said myself, and I've watched different ministries and different things. I go, how, why is it that that works for them? And you can see the fruits and you can see things happening. But yet when I feel like I'm doing the same thing or trying to do the same thing, it doesn't seem to work. Well, not been following the rules the way that God wants them. I want to do it my way. Oh, I like this over here, but I, I don't want to do that over there. And, and so I'm going to do it, do it my way. Well, when you do it your way, it just doesn't work. 
You can't just choose to believe any old way, because if you believe it wrong, it won't work. You must use that faith the way God wants you to, because it's his supernatural faith, not a human faith. Man, I love the way that's put because so many times, well, it's me, it's my faith and what I do. And, and, and I, I'm me, 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 me. Again, it's nothing about us. Well, I'm learning that so much here lately. So much. It's, uh, it is God or it is nothing. I mean, it is God or it's nothing. God's word speaks of the law, excuse me, of faith. Where is boasting then? This is in Romans 3, 27. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. All right. Excuse me there. Had to take just a little bit of a break. Um, <clears throat> where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Although this isn't the main point of Romans 3, it's still a true statement. God's faith in you operates according to the law of faith. Constant and universal. Faith works according to the law God's cre God created to govern its use. The word law in this sense means constant, without fluctuation or variation, and universal. That means faith works for everyone, everywhere, in the same way, much like the law of gravity. If you walk off the edge of a house, you're going to fall and you're going to go to the ground. That is the law of gravity. <clears throat> Can that law be broken? Yeah, if you're in a plane or, or if you're in a helicopter or something like that. But there are laws there governing what can happen. If you don't have enough power going, you're going to hit the ground. Gravity is constant without fluctuation or variation and universal. Applying to everyone on earth. That's why we call it a law. For instance, if we're in Southern Illinois using the law of gravity to sit in the chair, and if for some reason you couldn't do the same over in China, gravity would be a phenomenon, not a law. In order for someone to be classified, for something to be classified as a law, it has to apply the same way to everyone, everywhere. Everyone, everywhere. Most people don't look at faith as being governed by law. They think God could do anything. He wants us to if they just ask him and believe. Excuse me. They think God could do anything he wants to that he wants to if they just ask him and believe. They don't understand that there are certain restrictions the Lord has placed upon himself. Now, people don't like hearing this either. I'm going to tell you. But the Lord has placed upon himself certain restrictions. Therefore, his faith always abides by these laws. Again, the truth is evident in the natural realm with the law of gravity. What happens if a person jumps off <clears throat> the Empire State Building? Does God want to see them die? No, he doesn't want to see them die. Is the Lord punishing that person? No. But he won't suspend the law of gravity in order to save their life either. God doesn't want people hurt or killed by gravity. But that's exactly what will happen if they violate the law. Are you getting that? If you violate the law, this is what happens. Faith is governed by law. God did not 
God did that for your benefit. He doesn't want you to die of sickness. He doesn't want you to fail financially or suffer, suffer mental and emotional problems. However, if you don't learn how faith works, oh man, this is good, and begin to co cooperate the, with these same laws, which were meant to bless you, when violated, it'll kill you. Now, that's an awesome truth. Let's read that again. The man, I'm telling you, I'm picking up some great nuggets myself. And you have to excuse me. I've got the old itchy nose. It happens all the time. I've said this before. You get online and you get the camera rolling and then your nose gets itching. Let's read that again. <clears throat> Faith is governed by the law. God did that for your benefit. He doesn't want you to die of sickness. He doesn't want you to fail financially or to suffer mental and emotional problems. However, if you don't learn how faith works and begin to cooperate, these same laws, which were meant to bless you, when violated, will kill you. God cannot because he will not violate his own laws. Oh, God can do anything. He can do, yes, he can do anything, but he will not violate his own laws. He won't. It's against his righteousness, righteous and holy nature. When God says something, that's the way that it is. He doesn't change things. He is established just because people, just because of people's whims, needs, or ignorance. Some people whom God loves with all of his heart die, not because it's his will, but because they violate his law of faith. Now grab a hold of that, folks. Like I said, there's some good nuggets in here today. He will not. God loves you all with all of your heart, and some people will die, not because of it's, it's his will, but because they have violated the law of faith. Guys, I got to tell you, there is some great nuggets in here. I don't know about you, but so many times we rely, and, and, and please hear me out here, we rely too much on the preacher and we drive, we rely too much on denominations and we rely too much. Well, old brother, so-and-so said this and old brother, so man, I'm telling you what, these are truths here that you, do, I, I've never had anybody explain things out like this about how faith works. I, I haven't not, I'm, I'm 62 years old soon to be 63, I've never, and I've been around the block as far as churches and ministries, I've never heard things put this way. That there's laws to faith. There's laws that you, that you can't, if you break them, things don't work and can harm you. I, I'm, boy, I do understand how, by doing these studies, how pastors uh, of congregations can get. Uh, I'm sure they're sitting there pouring their heart out like I'm trying to do here through these teachings to get, can you get this? Will you get a hold of this? Knowing that if they get a hold of it, that it can change their lives. And I understand more and more about how when people just off the cuff and, and uh, well, I don't think that's the way it is. And, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. But our job as Christians, let's leave pastors and preachers clear out of it. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. I'm just a guy who gets on here and shares what I feel is God is wanting me to share. Am I using someone else's material? Yes. 
I am because it's it's biblical. There are just <clears throat> so many scriptures to back up everything that's been said here today. So what did we learn today? Everyone is given the measure of faith. They don't give preachers the big measure of faith and us back here, the little measure of faith. They don't, that's not the way it works. We're all given the measure of faith. We have to learn how that faith works. There are laws to it. When you go with the law on a way that God has had it set up, you will see the benefits of it. If you go against it and not do what the word of God says, it can harm you. Boy, this has been so good for me personally. So I'm, I pray someone else is getting something out of this. I know I have very, very good study this evening. <clears throat> Supernatural faith. Tell you what, so good. The law of faith. Well, this is uh, lesson number 20, and we will, we've got about six more lessons, and we'll be moving into something else. Next week, we're going to be talking about faith speaks. So, <clears throat> another good study on faith. I thank you all for hanging out with me this evening. I pray God is blessing you. And we'll be right back here tomorrow with another daily devotional. But until then, let's go out and let's see people healed. Let's see the dead raised. Let's see people come to Jesus Christ. Man, I tell you what, we've been given the power and the authority to do so. So let's get out there and let's get with it. In Jesus' name name. Good to see y'all. Have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.